want to talk to you about Maria Sibela Marion. Uh, she is a scientist. She's a German scientist, uh, as you can see, from the late 17th into the early 18th century. Uh, and she is an artist because she created zoological and botanical illustrations that are more than just imitation. Uh, they actually, as you'll see, have a beautiful design quality about them. So she's both an artist and a scientist, and this, this idea of science meeting art. Um, she is uh, one of, the, historically, uh, probably the most famous, uh, most important entomologist, a person that studies insects. And uh, her zoological and botanical illustrations combine accuracy and aesthetics where art and science are meeting. Uh, she did her drawings uh, of uh, flowers, fruit, birds, worms, insects, spiders, uh, other animals. And these were published as hand-colored engravings. And she, I think she actually did the hand the engraving. I mean, not I me. Mean, they were published as hand-colored engravings, and I think she did the, the colors. So sometimes you'll see pictures that are actually from the engravings after her uh, paintings. Her father, Matthias, was a Swiss engraver uh, who published uh, engravings of, of flower species in 1641. So it's in the family. Her stepfather was a Flemish flower painter and uh, she married a pupil of her stepfather, so she married uh, a painter herself, Johann Andreas Graf. Unfortunately, that didn't work out so well. Uh, she actually gets a divorce um, and uh, goes off and does her thing, which is science. Um, her first publication was the New Flower Book, the Neue Blumenbuch of 1680, and it came out uh, in three volumes. And essentially, she had engravings of, paint, of flowers, which she hand-painted. And these uh, were a very specific use. These were model books. They could be used uh, for painters. I told you, not all those painters set up uh, still lifes. Some of them uh, did imaginary uh, still lifes. Um, they could be used for painters. Uh, they could use, be used for embroidery designs. Uh, they could be used, for example, if a carpenter um, you know, wanted to paint flowers on uh, the chest that he was creating. Uh, so they had a, a functional use, and uh, most of these don't survive uh, because they were used. Here's another example from the uh, new flower book. Uh, most of her books that were the science books have a long title, which we're trying to translate here. Um, and then we might have a short version. So the Caterpillar book was Caterpillars, Their Wonderful Transformation and Peculiar Nourishment from Flowers or from Plants, depending on your translation. Once again, three volumes coming out. The last one was Posthumous. And this was a catalog of European uh, moths, butterflies, and insects. And they traced her Food, their food, and their, she would show the, uh, the insect with the plant that was its food. And it also showed their life cycle. She would show them uh, in the larvae stage and you know, as a butterfly or you know, the, the different states. Um, this was based on her own scientific research and her drawings. Now, what she did was absolutely remarkable. She used a new scientific method. At this time, um, People believed that insects spontaneously generated, they'd see them crawling out of dung, and so they say, oh, they spontaneously generated from excrement. <laughs> um, that didn't seem very scientific to Maria. So she collected insects' eggs. She put the plants that she had found them with um, in. Uh, she fed them. She recorded their appearance, and she did very careful drawings, as you can see, depicting each insect in the various stages with its preferred plant. This was a new scientific discovery. No one had had any idea how insects generated. So she completely disproved this idea of spontaneous generation, and she established the scientific explanation of the life cycle of insects. 
you know, which now every school children and child knows you have an egg, you have a larvae, you know, and then your butterfly or your bug comes out. She's the one who found that out. It revolutionized zoology and botany, and it laid uh, foundations for later classifications of animals and uh, plant species. She divorced her husband. <laughs> they didn't get along, evidently. Uh, I don't know whether, what, why. The books don't tell you. One wonders if he disapproved of her being a scientist, but that's pure speculation. Um, she moved to Amsterdam, where there was an artistic and scientific community. And then in 1699, she went to South America, to Suriname. Uh, she took with her her younger daughter, who also uh, participated in her uh, science and uh, discoveries. Uh, at this time, she was 52 years old. Her daughter was 21. They went out to the South American jungle in Dutch, what is Dutch Guinea, which is the northeastern South America, uh, to study the insects, the plants, and animals of this faraway exotic jungle, uh, something that had never been done before. She spent two years, and they researched uh, the monkeys, the insects, the reptiles, the birds, the plants, and the local customs. So in a sense, she was also doing some uh, anthropology, even though there probably wasn't such a thing at that time. Um, she did become ill uh, and, uh, in 1701, and she returned to Amsterdam with their notes and their drawings, and created a book that was published in 1705, uh, The Metamorphosis Insectoria su surinaceum, uh, the metamorphosis of Surinam insects, or the insects of Surinam. Uh, it was published in 1705. It had 60 large plates with engravings after her drawings. Uh, and this is what you usually see when you see pictures uh, by Marion. Uh, as you can see, uh, she's, she's continued that idea of having the plants that would be the nourishment for the insects and showing their whole life cycle. So you see the larvae and you see the uh, butterflies here. Um, it also was published in an edition in uh, 1719, which of course is after her death. Um, but uh, that's the publication that it seems to be most available. So that's where we have our pictures. Uh, you can see that the forms are just beautiful decorative forms as well as being scientific accurate, scientifically accurate. Uh, but the design quality is just beautiful. Meticulous technique. She used watercolor on parchment. Uh, she used, so you have both the scientific data and the aesthetic quality with the, as I say, beautiful placement on the surface and a beautiful rhythm and pattern. Um, I found two, I found a variety of pictures of this on the website. Uh, this is a, this is her little uh, caiman, speckled caiman and the South American false coral snake. I don't know if you want to do that with a real coral snake. Uh, and I found two different pictures of it facing different directions. <laughs> um, they both said they were from insects of, uh, of uh, Suriname. Um, I wondered if one could have been the drawing and one could have been the engraving. Uh, because you, when you, you know, when you engrave something, it reverses the image. But uh, maybe it's just that somebody published it on the web in reverse. I'm not sure. But they do seem to be slightly different, and of course, uh, might be a different edition, or it might be that this is the uh, original drawing. I don't know. Some of these I've tried to take the pictures, and they didn't come out too well. So they're from uh, books or from the websites. In 1715, she had a stroke, and in 1717, she died penniless, uh, supported by her children. So she gave really everything to her science, in a sense.